from Navy. He's out. So Thomas Colucci will start. Reagan Endress, the senior faceoff guy in for Albany as it's picked up by Ben Weyer. Taken away quickly by Albany as they get to start things off. There's Jake Pisano, the grad student from all time for the Virginia Cavaliers. Shots, skip pass. Here's Millen, another what great save by Whitney. You know, I think because he's a shorter goalie that the assumption is you, that the upper corners are available and most, most of the shorter goalies are very good at covering the top. Shot whizzes past the cage. Noons couldn't stretch to it. Connor Fundis to the middle. Down low, Richmond has it picked off. Fulton there gets it to Noons for the clear. But well, we're not seeing John Schroeder, the outstanding young defenseman who's been hurt. They have the kind of polls, much like Virginia, that personally with the Prestacino is going to stay in the game. But they, they are a movement offense. Step out, shot of change inside. Look at that shot right there. BTB! Richmond, the Delta, British Columbia product, gets the first goal of the day, and Albany leaves one to nothing. Well, that's the kind of goal you expect to see from Albany. They are very comfortable taking the backhand oh, shot. Sometimes they'll change hands, but a lot of times they are best with their strong hand, shooting either straight on or over their back, or backhand, and that was a great shot past Nunes. 15th goal of the year, high, backed up by Sunderland. Now you could see how quickly when the short got matched up with Connor Schellenberger, the pole immediately came and doubled. I addressed it once, but last time these two teams faced off, it was 2005 in the NCAA tournament as an off-ball foul leads to a turnover for Virginia, their fourth of the day here in the first quarter. You, know, you, you always talk about the, the team that should be better. It starts off slowly, and usually turnovers are what do it. Yeah. As Kastner comes down on the helmet, no flag. They got gotten away with one there. Usually you hear that. Yeah, I can see Coach Moore, arms raised. We can hear it from here. You see that hit as now Schellenberger goes in. Whitney, an unpenetrable force to start this game. He's got four saves already. Everything stick on stick. Firing wide. Those games by one goal, losing to Colgate. 11 to 10, Drexel 13, 12 in overtime, and then UMass 12 to 11. Here's up top, Richmond, the low stinger, beats noon stick side, and the Great Danes come into Klockner and two straight. Yeah, when you watch film on, on Albany, their style of play is quick passes, lots of movement, lots of off ball movement, and throwing the ball inside. The movement has been phenomenal. So far for the Great Danes, we mentioned it a second ago, Coach Marr said, hey, they're not scared of the Virginia Cavaliers, and they're showing that right here. Up two to nothing, Albany leads with 7.38 left in the first quarter. And off Richmond. Back up top, moves through Reed. Free ball up high, picked up by Jaeger. The transfer from Harvard, outlet for Weyer. Possible fast break for the Cavaliers. Schellenberger over to Cormier, low pass, it's free. Pizzano's there, but it's picked up. James Reed going the other way. Here's the ride for Virginia. Millen, a broken stick, has to come get a new one. Cormier still on the ground ball. It's gonna be 22nd, or they are able to pick it up, very close to the 22nd. Max Neeson finally gets it. Gets it down to Wimmer now. Crepanzano transfers from St. Joseph and Scranton. Richmond again! Already a first quarter hat trick. And Albany stunning the Cavaliers so far up three to nothing. And all three goals by Richmond are assisted goals off of the ball movement. You know, again, they're, they're, it isn't as if Albany is, is really trying to necessarily win a one-on-one -on -one dodge battle. What they're doing is they're getting the defense and then you're moving, creating gaps. I mean, it's a really creative offense. Goes through X. Kesserling has the short stick matchup. Beats his man. Goes post side. Nunes is there for his second stop of the day. 
Has to clear it by himself. Kesseling right on him. Not where you want to see your goalie. Five yards over the middle line. Nice job by Matthew Nunes. And good help right there. He might be wearing a long sleeve, but no sh elbow pads on him as he took some slashes there. Cormier picks the corner. Peyton Cormier with 3.07. Finally gets Virginia on the board. That won't count as one of Connor's assists to the record, but he really set the play up for what he called the uh, hockey assist by moving the ball to Boyd, who then made the pass to 28. So after seven shots for the, the last 15, 20 years, his shots can't get it. Picked up on the doorstep. What a save, Whitney. A second one. He got the save, the rebound. Shots on the doorstep. Closes it again. Well, yeah, you know what? It's almost like we're seeing uh, Logan McNini again. We know against Maryland, the same size goalie, a lefty, very good matching sticks, high to high, and very quick hand. We can see from here how how well already moves the ball, and when the ball moves in the air, they all four guys, five guys are moving as well. Richmond, the quick trigger. Nunes is ready this time. Closes the five hole, gets the save. Three now for Matthew Nunes. Tough pass right there to Whalen for Pasapino. Clears perfect so far. That's the first one missed for Virginia. Fast break coming, fired wide. As that three goals, but they wouldn't mean anything if Landon Whitney weren't playing this well. Well, he really has. And again, sometimes when you, you know, the shortest goalies do, as you probably know, you know, are more conscious of taking away the top of the goal and the saves he's made are certainly the high shots. So Virginia may have to change their placement. And what Doug's referring to is, I'm a former goalie and I'm short, so I fit the <laughs> whole bill there. I didn't do the short part, just said you're a former goalie. <laughs> it's a big save from Noons on the other side. And a great outlet all the way to the midfield to Schellenberg, and Virginia has a break. Numbers! The best fast break team in the country does their thing, makes it 3-2, Schellenberger to Cormier. And I believe with that, Connor. You know, talking to coaches, he's, his improvement, and they knew he was an outstanding high school player coming from Calvert Hall. He's just getting his way as far as that second midfield group. Sunderland moves for Cormier. Whitney deflects it away. This Albany defense takes over the clear. Five of eight so far today. Works to the other side for Richmond. Popped up. Oh, just took it right out of the air. Now Kastner gets it back. Great ride from the Cavaliers. Cormier. Two goals, only two for the Cavaliers today. Turns inside, great defense from the Great Danes, picked up Pizzano. Well, the one thing that he does so well is his, his, his stick is so active, you know, that, that just counts his numbers because he's way out of the slide package. You know, Virginia again, just trying to go ahead and get some good matchups and force some offensive midfielders for Albany to stay on D. Here's Colsey. Eyes up, feeds in the middle. Intended for Boyden. It was going to be over and back, but it was a play on because it was a clean pickup. So Albany allowed to continue the break. Gets it down low. Kessel ring. Has Terenzi on the short stick. Tries to go to Doherty. As Terenzi runs it down. Causes the pile up. Ball still free. Weyer. Trying to get to it, tiptoes in front of the crease and takes it out. How many times have we seen Ben Ware this year for Virginia pick up the tough ground ball and carry it? Weyer's been a fantastic LSM for. As you can see, unlike some defensemen, Pacino, let it look at the great Pacino look, great save. Pacino down on the doorstep. Doherty can't find the back of the net. Noons was there. Third defenseman. There's no one and two are going to take Cormier and, and Schellenberg. It's now Millen pushes up top. Pass for McIntosh. Little away. Here's Pacino. That's why he's one of the best. Picks up a ground ball and takes it the other way. He's, you know, he's, he's going to sprint down and stay dangerous. It's on target. Still a pretty good percentage. And here's Connor Schellenberger. One more point. He'll be the all-time leader in program history. Backhanded, Millen, cross, Menke. 
He scores! That's the, the Yankee goal that they've been waiting for. You can tell how excited he is. You know, he's been going through the, uh, the transition from being an attacker to a midfielder. Excellent face dodge. He's able to beat the defender in one of the few times today uh, Nick, we've actually seen somebody score on a high shot because uh, Whitney's been so good in tight. That, that was a great shot by Nancy right there. And a big goal for Virginia. Only a minute and a half left in the 3-3 score. The junior from Dallas, Texas makes it. They're not scared, and it's tied 3-3. Yeah, and, you know, you can't say that Virginia's played poorly. It's just all you all you just played so well and so even with Virginia. I think that's the thing that's been most impressive is that you know, they've obviously got one of the best defenders in the country. The young goalies play well. Uh, you know, they certainly don't look like a team that, that went two and four, but as Coach Moore told me, he said three of those goal games were one goal losses, and he felt like his team had chances, and probably if he had those games over again, he, it, the outcome might have been different. Losing some tight ones, three of them one goal games. D'Souza and Colucci doing well at the faceoff X for Virginia, five of nine. Yeah, we'll see what changes Virginia makes. I mean, if, if you're you all, but you don't need to make any changes. Just continue to do what you're doing well. You know, Virginia is a team that's going to need to adjust to the way you all is playing. Millen, low angle. First lead of the day for the Virginia Cavaliers as McCabe Millen gets in on the action. Well, he put the ball low. You know, we talked about how well Whitney is playing on the high shot. He's made like six or seven in tight saves, matching sticks. In the first, you know, three goals that Virginia scored, two by Corbier, one by Nathan. They did shoot high, but that's the first shot that Virginia's been able to put. Dave's on the other side. Kastner moves it over for Terenzi, and here's Boyden, transfer from Tufts, D3 player of the year. Now coming to the Cavaliers, Schellenberger in front. He shoots, he scores! Connor Schellenberger makes history. 278. Most points scored by any player in Virginia lacrosse history. Connor Schellenberger finds the back of the net, 5-3. Virginia leads. Yeah, out, you know, finally outscored his teammate, and he and Matt Moore obviously led Virginia to national championships. And if you talk to Con Connor Schellenberger, the first thing he would do is give credit to his teammates. You know, that's the thing that makes. I think he may lead the team in shots today, other than he and Richmond. And I think they've been their two most aggressive shooters. He's got four shots so far. The ball's nearly taken away. Casino tries to cut off the man to nice place a man the ball. No, it's his more picking up the ground ball. Here's Erdman, moves it down low. Millen, the jump shot from outside swish. Six to three, Virginia. Up now, three goals on you, Albany. Well, I think what uh, I'm sure Coach Kevin Cassis talked about at halftime was, was picking up the pace of the offense. Those, those three goals were all quick possessions. As for the Cavaliers. Uh, Thunderland probably could have maybe stepped away and switched hands, but because of the double team, he really had no place to go except with the backhand look. And as you said, if he gets it to McCabe Millen, he's got the wide open on the side, and now we've got a flag down. Flag goes up. Casino had the ball, Kologi battling with it. Is now Crepanzano has it, Weyer on him. Yeah, you could have a you could have a, a foul, a goal and a foul, because it looked like it would have been a slash, and there it could be. And there it is. The great Danes answer the call. 6-4 now. As Chris Crepanzano, the junior from Basking Ridge, New Jersey, gets the goal, and it's six to four, but it still a penalty coming for the Cavaliers. So Crepanzano scores, and of course, after by scoring the goal with a with a minute foul, now it's going to be a three on two at the at the dot, and then if they win the uh, faceoff, the Great Danes will have the extra. from X back through Millen. Coming out of the box on the slashing penalty. Underhanded four shots, quick movement. Here's Schellenberg. Down low, Boyden with the movement. In front, quick stick, Millen. McCain Millen. Didn't do much in the first half. Well, five minutes into the second. 
He's got a hat trick, three goals for McCabe Miller. Now, when you talk about uh, Jack Boyd, and of course he came from Tufts, this is the leading scorer, Division Three Player of the Year, as an attackman where he accumulated so many points. And so now on the year for the freshman, McCabe Millen, you mentioned the grad transfer Jack Boyden from Tufts. He's got 12 assists on the season. Nine minutes left here in the third quarter. Virginia back with a three goal lead, but U Albany getting the face off win here. And if, you, and if you're U Albany after that outstanding first half being tied down three, you know, again, they want to they want to make sure that they value these possessions. They don't want to get to see Virginia get on any more of a run. And right there, maybe a quick shot. Saved by Nunes, and Virginia on the break. Here's Weyer. Fast break for the Cavaliers. Schellenberger, Millen, jump shot. Four goals. McKay Millen, he can beat you just like that. Cavaliers up by four. That's textbook fast break. He only makes a save, gets the gets ball off the ground. Nunes to Weyer. Weyer to Schellenberger, Schellenberger to McKay. You know, 80 yards and four passes in about less than 10 seconds. That's uh, quality lacrosse right there. Going the whole length of the field. It starts with that save from Nunes. He picks up his own rebound. A great outlet check there. Here's it, the, you know, the Virginia second midfield. McIntosh, Corey, and Sunderland. Here's McIntosh. Sends down the alley. Goes to the other side. Will Corey, grad student. Local it product. For Cormier. Cormier shoots. He scores. Another hat trick for the Cavaliers as Cormier gives Virginia the five goal lead. It's 9 4. And a timeout needed. We'll take a break here from Klockner. 7 47 in the third quarter. Virginia leads 9 4. Off a U Albany player, so no Kastner clock. touching it is okay. No shot clock reset. Shuts outside. Millen, can he do it again? He does. McCabe Millen, another fiver on the year as Virginia explodes in the third quarter, ten to four. Now, the one thing about about the zone defense from a goalie perspective is it does give the standing shooter more time to, to, to pick a spot, and that's what McKay Millen has been able to do in this second half. You know, that's obviously a decision they feel that that's the best way to get seconds. Even with the uh, time winding down, now they're down to 13 seconds. Castle Ring starting from outside the box for Hogg. Richmond. Doherty, Richmond. To the other side, Crapanzano. Penalty's released. Richmond has to go fast. He fires. Nunes with the save. Second chance. Stops it before it passes the goal line. Got underneath of him. He lost it for a second, but another save. Down on his knees. Nunes is fired up. Weyer trying to go the way. He does. Ben Weyer. End to end. And it all starts with Matthew Nunes for Virginia at full force, up 11 to four. You think these two poles are a little competition with each other? You know, Ben Ware sees what's going on at the other end of the field with Casino, and he goes, well, I'm gonna get mine to show him I can, can play offense too, so. And what was interesting, again, with that pole, he was caught really in, in a, in kind of a, you know, a clutch between two or three defenders able to spin. Now up top for Sunderland. Sunderland has Richmond, the attackman, on the one-on-one -on -one matchup, trying to exploit it. Schellenberger inside, Cormier, what a play! Virginia, tic-tac-toe, three seconds on the clock. They're up by eight. Well, that's a confidence pass right there from Connor Schellenberger to Peyton Cormier. Again, that's a tight catch, but Cormier with his size is able to catch, handle, and finish. And uh, again, but uh, you know, give to it Sunderland the start of the play. You know, he recognized that he had a short stick matchup, took advantage of it, and got the defense moving to, to him, to Schellenberger, to Cormier inside. A lot of these goals in the third quarter have been great. Virginia defense has been fantastic with 10 of the 12 goals scored by 
Cormier, Schellenberger, and Virginia as a quick start to Souza for Schellenberger. Cross, Cormier, he shoots. Now it's 11. <laughs> Five goals for Peyton Cormier. And as Doug just said, 11 goals for this Virginia attack unit. It's 13 to four, Virginia up. Well, it always starts at the X if you can win that face off straight going forward. And that's exactly what happened right there. And that's something we haven't seen a lot of for Virginia this year without Gabriel, but uh, again, you know, Matthew D'Souza does a nice job of pushing a team with the best record, but there are some very good teams and it's a very competitive league. You know, when you just talk about Coach Morris' success and the time in the 24 years he's been there, he's been, you know, he's got nine America East championships, a tremendous record. Six-time America East Coach of the Year, Jack Boyden with a stinger. Going top left for a 10-goal lead for Virginia. The Tufts transfer makes it 14 to four. Well, that's a place where Virginia, as they get into the schedule, particularly with they've got you know Drexel on Saturday, a very good Harvard team that just lost their first game to Yale on Saturday, and then they get into the four, four game. To score there, maybe he gets another. It's now Jaeger. One-on-one -on -one matchup as he gets pulled out. Here's coming from the midfield line. Carino passes it off for Kesselring. Uh, Donald uh, substituting Will Burt, another outstanding young player, playing some midfield defense and a really nice move again. Richmond. Four goals. Four goals on the day. He just takes that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Tiptoes the crease, finds the back of the net to get back within 10, nine goal lead now for the Virginia Cavaliers, 14 to five here at clock. That's his first unassisted goal. The first three were off assists off of, you know, a six on six offense. Mastic New York takes a seat in the box. Just a 30 second one here for the Cavaliers. Schellenberger to Cormier, gets it right back. Millen, shots right back. Boyd in. Looks for Millen. Virginia Bench counting the passes here. Cormier. Back up top, Schellenberger. Back door, Colsey! What a feed! Connor Schellenberger with the eyes up. Gets it to Ryan Colsey. 15-5, Virginia. Well, one of the things that uh, Virginia's doing on their man up, a little bit of a different look. Normally, you would expect to see Peyton Cormier inside. They put Cormier on a shooter's wing out of their 3-3 formation and put Ryan Colsey, who I'm sure you know, has played attack and midfield. Here's Sunderland. Trying to get the pick. It's called moving. And gives it to Albany. Couldn't see exactly, but looked like, you know, maybe Harmon. There's not in game anymore for Virginia. Mankey in at attack for the Cavaliers. And her lead out of Norfolk Academy. Split by Pacino and pass drops and goes out of bounds. Gives it to the Great Danes. And uh, Coach Moore sticking with uh, Landon Whitney. On a fast break opportunity is now McIntosh coming in. Will Corey with it? And here comes where Underly will make that third midfield or that second midfield group. Underly is from Norfolk Academy in Virginia. Will Corey Mankey. From, from Episcopal in Virginia. Mankey fires. Catches the defense sleeping. His second goal of the day. Virginia back up by 10. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that one's kind of handcuffed Landon Whitney a little bit. I don't think he was, really Mankey was just kind of drifting. You know, it didn't look like he was going to really do much other than just kind of carry the ball toward the top of the box. The next thing you know, he saw that maybe Whitney was relaxed and let it go. Just catches them off as well. He, they recognized the quality of, that there were quality players in the state of Virginia and they actively recruited those and made sure they were part of the Virginia team. BTB. So it's Sunderland. Probably had, more, probably had more time, could have turned and shot, but you know, it wasn't a bad look. This is wide, and now Hugh Albany picks it up unsettled. Moved it for numbers. Doherty. Here's Pacino. He takes a shot. Morris is ready. Tracks the bouncer the whole way. Second chance. Pacino. Pacino. 
finally gets his goal. 16 to seven, Virginia up. Take that, Ben Ware. Um, as I said before. Hey, they're uh, even now. They're even now, exactly, exactly. Um, well, we're seeing two of the best. And what makes, you know, so much fun to watch both of them is they play with, you know, with, with speed, their passing is so accurate. Um, you know, they play a little bit of a different role, I think, but, you know, Pacino is obviously playing close. You figure Virginia would make a run, but, you know, when they had that three to one lead and looked like they were rolling on offense and then they really went through, the, you know, pretty much a, almost a two quarter drought was the difference. But Richmond. Five. He gets five. Goal, University of Albany, number 15. And it looks like he actually five adds on Richmond. his sixth. Oh, it's six. That's right, because we forgot. I forgot about that outside shot. And so it, it, 16 to eight now, and Richmond has a six. He's got a double hat trick. He does, well, and uh, that was a quick stick from about eight yards. So, you know, we talked about the, the variety of his scoring shots. So 20 goals on the season now for him. He came in with. You know, in the first half, I think we had two total. Now we're obviously up to six. So Virginia heads to the box on the face-off violation. Their first of the day, D'Souza sitting. 20 seconds on the penalty. Doherty outside for Hogg. Wimmer up, Hogg back door. Richmond, what a feed! Yeah. If I was a betting man, I should have put uh, I should have put ten dollars on Richmond to score the next goal. Richmond's got seven. Well, and he came from the backside, and, and I watched his motion because I figured I figured he had to be the the uh, the finisher on the play. He started on the right hand low box and just cut cross crease, you know. And, and again, what he does so well, you talk about players who seem to know where the openings are in the defense, and that's exactly what he did. He just kind of just. This really snuck in between two defenders and scored his seventh goal of the game. Now one minute left. Moving it for Mankey is Colucci. Thought Colucci might have had the room to shoot, but he passes it off, and now it's free. Here's Whitney. Nice pass. Feeds it off, Pacino. Pacino looking for the return. Here's Pacino, fires! <laughs> He's got two. 37 seconds Goal, left. U Albany down Pacino. by six, 16 to 10. And Pacino, who has been trying to do it all day on the offensive that's, end, that, now with his second goal. That's two players with nine out of 10. Just a great day from Pacino and Richmond. Richmond with seven. You know, Virginia just too much offense in that, in that third quarter to separate, but. Uh, you know, quality effort from both teams. You know, Tuesday games were always tough. Uh, not both teams handled coming off a big wins and they played at a high level. And you mentioned it, this U Albany team very young, most of it being underclassmen, so a bright future for the Great Danes as they stuck around.